The title today is The Groanings of the Saints. When we read Bible, there is a groaning you can read. The groaning of David. The groaning of the Paul. Boy, it's a lot of groaning. And we all know the story about David. David sinned. He is a saint. He is a believer. And he even received the Holy Spirit from God. But even though you have the Holy Spirit in you, One can sin like David. It's a shocking, right? Yeah. Some people believe that uh, you cannot sin when you receive Holy Spirit. Okay. After you receive Holy Spirit, boy, if you, if that's really true. My, all Christians must be what? Perfect. So, if you, if someone really believed that uh, you never sins after you receive Holy Spirit, then that's the road to the perfectionism. It's a serious. Okay. okay. Now, let's hear. Oh, one second. Oh, let's let's look at what David said. Uh, David, uh, uh, David really uh, says to God. He prays like this. It's a Psalm fifty-one, verse nine. After David uh, committed, you know. Uh, adultery with the Bathsheba, the wife of the Uriah, and he even killed Uriah. He committed murder, and he was really groaning. Why did I do that? Oh, and so he says in Psalm chapter fifty-one, verse nine. Hide your face from my sins. So David definitely admitting that he sinned. So David says, "Hide your face. Don't look at my sin. You know, hide your face from my sins and blot out, blot out all my iniquities." Iniquity is uh, evil. It's the same word as a sin. Now, next verse says, "Create in me clean heart." David admits, even though he had he had the Holy Spirit in him, he says, "My heart is dirty." So, please create in me the new heart, mm. O oh God, and the renew. A steadfast spirit within me. Yeah. Steadfast means what? Unchanging spirit. Yeah. What David actually is saying is what? My spirit is wavering all the time. Mm. So I want to have, have you to create in me new spirit which is steadfast. Mm. And chapter 51, uh, verse 11 says, Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. You gave me your Holy Spirit, and I received it. Look, I sinned like this. So please do not take the Holy Spirit you gave me away. 
So now we can definitely see that David sinned what with the pre, uh, with Holy Spirit in him, in his heart. Yeah. So even the Holy Spirit came in. A man like David can what go against and sin according to the what the evil spirit. Yes, we do that. So it is it is a big misunderstanding that uh, after receiving Holy Spirit you cannot sin. Okay, that that's a really a dangerous perfectionistic uh, legalistic concept. Okay. Now Psalm uh, six, verse six. David says, I am worn out from groaning. All night long, I flood my bed with weeping and uh, drench my couch with the tears. Next verse, uh, verse 22, 1, chapter 22. One. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? David said, saying, uh, and David did said this, and you know exactly same kind, same word. Who, who said it? Jesus said it on the cross. Even Jesus is what? Why are you forsaking me? Uh, blaming God. You know why Jesus do that? Did that? Jesus is supposed to be really perfect, but Jesus also has a, whose body? Our body. Our body is not perfect body. Our body is a sinful body. There's a lots of evil genes in in ourselves. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? <laughs> David sounds like he's not saved yet. <laughs> you know. So we can be this way too. David did it. Even Jesus did it so far. Uh, why are you so far? from saving me so far from the word of my groaning. I'm groaning all the time and you never do anything. You are so far from me. And then Psalm 31 verse 10 says, my life is consumed by anguish and my ears of the groaning, my strength fails because of my affliction, and my bones grow weak. His, his body even feels that. Next. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away. It means what? If he did not a cry or a say something, and he keeps silence. Then in the silence, then my bones waste away, wasted away through my groaning all day long. So I don't think anyone can, wish, you know, have a, a more groaning than David. <laughs> I am feeble. Next verse, I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. And then, last verse says, Because of my loud groaning, I am reduced to skin and bones. Now, the, Paul says this in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 22. We know that whole creation has been groaning. Everybody in this world is groaning. Why? Because Satan is really giving them hard time. That's why. Everybody, every creation, hmm. uh, not just human being only, what? 
even animals, you know, animals dies, animals, you know, uh, having so much uh, uh, in pain and so on. Uh, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the what? Present time. And then next verse, Roman chapter verse 8, verse 23, not only so, but we ourselves, we ourselves, we are Christian, we are believer, we know Jesus, even ourselves, hmm. uh, who, but we ourselves, who have the what? First fruit of spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. So he, he definitely uh, 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 make sure that, you know, uh, we can be growing even though we do have the Holy Spirit. Okay. Grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, which means the redemption of our body. What Paul is saying that we receive the Holy Spirit, and our heart is one of them, our mind one of our Lord Jesus and the God. But my body is what? The same sinful body. So, Paul is saying actually, my sinful body, or Paul called this body, the body of death. Therefore, we are still waiting for our body completely be redeemed. That means becoming a new creation. Right? Yeah. Which we will be that way when we resurrect. Okay? And the Paul says, uh, Roman chapter 8, verse 26. In the same way, spirit helps in our weakness. Uh, the weakness means what? Why we are still weak, not strong enough? Because of our sinful body. Mm. So, uh, so, in our weaknesses, who helps? Holy Spirit helps us huh? in our weakness. Uh, Holy Spirit know that we are not yet what? Perfect. Okay? Uh, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but Spirit himself intercede for us with the groans. Even Holy Spirit is what? groaning himself because of our weakness. Wow. It's wonderful to hear, right? It's not just me groaning. Even Holy Spirit, who knows I am groaning, and he groans for me. Wow. Spirit himself intercede for us with the groans that the word cannot express. When Holy Spirit groans for me because of my weakness, uh, Holy Spirit say, says something, but we don't even can understand. We cannot even understand. Why? Because his groaning is much what? More severe than my groaning. Mm. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed with our heavenly dwelling. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Here, uh, Paul says, our heavenly dwelling means new body, new created body, like an angel's body. Okay, a spiritual body. Okay. So, uh, meanwhile we groan, 
longing to be closed, closed with our heavenly dwelling. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile uh, until we, uh, we are, we are going to be finally closed with what? New body, the new creation, uh, the body like angels. Body like angels is found. Uh, this is exactly what Jesus says in the Luke chapter 20, verse 36. Okay. And Jesus says, uh, you are not going to have uh, the same body when you resurrect. Your body will be like what? Equal to angels. And uh, that's why you don't marry and you don't Get pregnant, <laughs> you know. There is no uh, uh, married couple. You know, we're gonna be entirely different being. Yeah. Okay. And next verse, Second uh, Corinthians uh, chapter five, verse four. For while we are in this tent. Uh, he uses the word tent or what? Dwelling. It's all the same thing. Said so that uh, new body, uh, new body, uh, the angel like body. Okay. While we are in this tent, uh, this simple body, okay, or body of death, we groan and uh, we are burned. So we change our body, become new creation, then there are not going to be any groaning. We simply groan still. It's because of what? Our sinful body. That's it. So God knows that it's because of our sinful body, body of sin. It's not your heart. God know that. Okay. Because we do not wish to be unclosed, but we to be closed with our heavenly dwelling. Same thing. So that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Mortal. This body is what kind of body? The, the, the Holy Spirit in my heart is not mortal. It's uh, eternal. Okay. But the body we have is mortal body. It's gonna be, go to the dust. You know. Mm. Now. Okay, now. Uh, chapter 7 of the uh, uh, Book of Roman. But, uh, Paul says, But now we have been delivered from the law. What does this mean? Delivered from the law. law. That means we are set free from the law. What kind of law? Law of Moses, which we cannot obey. Okay. And who delivered us from the law of Moses, which we cannot obey? It's Jesus. By the what? By the law of spirit and the life. Right? But now we have been delivered from the law of Moses, having died to what we were held by, so that we should serve in the newness of the spirit, not in the <coughs> oldness of the letter of the law. So just because we're delivered from, we're set free from the Moses law, we become a lawless person. We we become a person who will live whatever you know he, according to whatever he desires. No. From that point on, see, as we are delivered from the Moses law, we have new law in our heart. Means what? Law of Christ, the law of Holy Spirit. And the life. 
law of love. So that means we are no longer following the letters of the Moses law, but when Moses law is fulfilled, it's perfected on the cross, and after the fulfillment of the Moses law on the cross, the entire Moses law becomes what? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That love. Okay? Uh, we studied many times already. So, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 2 uh, shows that uh, same thing. For the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and the death. It's the same, same verse here. And now, now, Romans chapter 7, verse 14 says, For we know that law is spiritual. Law is spiritual. I have a new law, not law of Moses in my heart, which is the law of spirit, of life. Not the Moses law anymore. Uh -huh. And so my heart, my mind becomes spiritual mind. But I am, my body is what? Carnal. Carnal means very sinful. Okay, carnal. Sold, my body is already what? It was sold under sin. My body is sold under sin. My body still is under the sin, under the law of Moses. Therefore, we wait for the what? Redemption of our body and becoming, really becoming, totally becoming what? Uh, uh, we, are, we are the children of God with the new body. Okay? Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> so Paul says, for what I am doing, what I am doing, I don't understand what I am doing. Why? Because for what I will to do that I do not practice. I, this is something I want to do. I want to do means what? I, I really am trying very hard not to hate my enemy. <laughs> but look at myself. I eventually what? Find myself hating him. Oh, I think Paul probably got a lot of stress, you know? So Paul is what? Yeah, he says, I am set free from the Moses law. The law of Christ, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the, the law of Moses, which is uh, sin and the death. I'm set free in my mind, but uh, I'm still what? My, my body is still what? Not really saved yet. Ah, oh. you know what? Uh, when 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 boys are young boys, right? Fifteen, sixteen, you know. Or even, you know, uh, men in their thirties, or even forties, when you look at uh, uh, the woman's nude, and then you know what? We we kind of do that the saliva. <laughs> And something we we we're eating something very tasty you know, tasteful. You don't want to do that, but automatically, yeah, we end up doing that. We call what? It's a conditioned reflex. So you are holy. <laughs> no. We cannot obey Moses' law. So look at this. 
I do not understand, Paul says, because for what I will to do, what I want to do, I don't, I don't want to have that kind, I don't want to have that desire to commit adultery. Yeah. But eventually, my body is already what? Responded. My body is already committing sin, committing adultery. So that, <clears throat> but what I hate, that I do. <laughs> now, in my heart, I hate to do that way. But eventually what I see, I find myself, I'm doing it. Uh, I think uh, that's why there's going to be, well, there is no sex uh, in heaven, but... Uh, but the woman can go <laughs> to heaven better and more easier than man because man is really suffering from you know that kind of uh, uh, animal desire. <laughs> and there are two different desires struggling on the planet. Mm -hmm. Two different desires That's right. Two different. It's evil desire and holy desire came from Holy Spirit and evil desire came from the evil in our body. So Paul, Paul is going to say that, okay? So Paul says, for the good good thing that I will to, I will to do. Good thing I really want to do. I do not do. Oh. Paul is really groaning, right? My, look at me. So honest man. Such an honest man, spiritually. You know? And he exposes himself. And I think all the ministers has to do this way to his church member. Really. Like they all sort of what? They're all trying to show the holiness only as a human being to the church member. Yeah. So that really give the church member kind of what? Oh, do I have to be like a, just like him? You know? No. The, we are all imperfect and uh, we, we can definitely sin anytime if we are not careful, right? That kind of a problem, uh, even though you are pastors, uh, you, you have it. You have to admit that honestly. Hmm. Look at this. Therefore, the, uh, chapter, uh, verse 20 says, Now, if I do what I will not to do, if I do something which I do not want to do, and then I do it, then is it Myself, is it I to do that bad evil? Paul says, no. I, I myself in me, in my heart, I really don't want to do that anymore. But then I end up doing this something I really do, didn't want to do. Then is it I commit sin? Paul says, oh, listen carefully. This is Paul says. Uh, it is, uh, it is no longer. Uh, 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 it is no longer. Uh, it is no longer I who do that bad thing, which I do not want to do. Right. Then it is not myself, it is not I do that. 
Then Paul says what? What is doing that? Then, look at that. But the sin that dwells in me. In my body, there is what? Sin is still living with me. Paul said the dwells. So dwells means what? Living with. That's dwelling. So sin is constantly what? Dwelling with me. Sin stays with me in my body. But uh, you know what the uh, people's problem is? Paul is a holy man. He doesn't have this kind of thing. You know, people really don't understand this Roman chapter 7. If you understand Roman chapter 7, you're not going to have that much problem. Why even Paul struggled this much? Paul even said what? In my body, there is a sin still living with me. What a honesty. What a truth. See, we all sort of consider our ministers. Oh, I respect my minister. Oh, he will never sin. Oh, I respect Dr. Lee. Look at him. Doesn't he look like Jesus? You know, that kind of it's 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 idolatry. So that's uh, you should not do that. Okay. So Paul says, but I see another law in my members. In my members means in my body. Okay. So uh, Paul uses this uh, uh, word, my members, in my body, not, not in my mind. But I see another law, the law of sin, right? Another law in my body, in my members, warring against the law of in my mind. In my mind, there's what law? The new law, which is in the Christ, which is what? The Law of spirit of life. You can see that uh, that law in the uh, Roman chapter eight, verse two, and the bring so law of sin in my members is bringing me into cap captivity. Oops, captivity to the law of sin, which is in my member. Still, the law of sin, the law of the Moses, is still staying with me in my body. This is killing me. This, this body has no life. That's why Paul calls what? My body of death. So Paul says, this is really groaning. Oh, wretched man that I am. I am wretched man. Don't look at me that I'm holy man. Uh -uh. That's the problem we have, the problem. <laughs> so whenever I'm unholy, uh, uh, we, we, we habitually thinking that, oh, I wish I could be holy as a Paul is. Don't do that anymore. Right? Oh, wretched man I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Well, God will say to Paul, what? Wait, <laughs> wait, don't worry about that. <laughs> now, now, Second Corinthians, uh, uh, chapter 12, verse 7, to keep me becoming conceited, 
very proud because of these surpassingly great revelations that Paul received. There was given me a thorn, thorn, thorn in my flesh, in my body, a messenger of Satan. And what is messenger of Satan? Messenger of Satan is evil spirit, evil angels. So Satan put me, you know, put uh, the evil angels in my genes, in my body. The gene is in the body, right? Yeah. A messenger of Satan to what? To torment me. Wow. God allowed that. So Paul says, Please, God, get rid of this for me. This is so painful. This is, I'm mourning because, you know, God, please, could you remove this? Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. What did God do? Paul begged him, please get rid of this from me. God says to Paul, what? My grace is sufficient for you. The grace God gave us to save us from sin is sufficient. Sufficient means what? It's good enough to forgive you any sins. That's right. You are committing sins in your mind, right? Because of this uh, what? Uh, uh, body of sin because of Satan's what? Uh, Satan's angel, the evil angel, is is um, disturbing your mind and uh, and, and uh, trying to make you think uh, or, or act, you know, uh, something you don't want to do. No problem. My grace is good enough. To be able to what? Cover all your sins, which is uh, you're committing what? Even now, after receiving Holy Spirit. It's not, it's not insufficient. It's sufficient. Mm. So, then Paul says, "My grace, uh, God says, my grace is uh, sufficient for you. For my power, uh, God is saying to Paul, right? My power, God's power, is made perfect in the weakness. When you feel the weakness, you know, you have to feel that you're weak. That's the only way for the time being." To make my power, God's power, perfect in you. Isn't that truth? Yeah. If we don't have that kind of torment, we don't have that kind of groaning, that we always probably feel what, hey, I'm doing great. I'm not even sinning anymore. You want to be that way? You rather have what? Attack. Of evil spirit, right? Yeah. So that is why, uh, uh -uh. therefore, I will boast, Paul says, I will boast all the more gladly about what? My weakness. Paul will, you know, have no problem and revealing. Showing that the uh, church members, what? 
how weak he is. That's what Paul is saying. This never happens in the church. This is the problem. I will boast. I will boast to my church member, right? More gladly about my weakness. So, uh, it is uh, it is not nice, not very good to show the church members how strong I am. You have to show church members what? How weak you are. Then what? But still, even though I'm this much weak, I believe in God's grace who saved me. That's the real gospel. Right? So, then 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. And this is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weakness. Uh, someone has to know this. <laughs> I delight. <laughs> I will delight in weakness. Insult, in insults, in hardships. So insulting, you know, when Satan attack, then I look at my own response. What an insulting, you know, I, I, I get so insulted from uh, uh, Satan. In persecution, in difficulties. For, wow, this is a wonderful word. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, if you reverse this statement of Paul, then it goes this way. For when I am strong, I am what? Weak. Okay, remember this. When you feel you are strong, uh -uh, you're going down. Oh, how weak I am. Then that's when you are the strongest in Jesus Christ, right? Ah. And now, so when we sin as a Christian, even with the Holy Spirit, we have we we do have a place to go to where therefore since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens jesus the son of god let us hold firmly to the face we profess okay whenever we feel weak every time we feel that we are so weak, and that we are being defeated, still you have something to do, what? Ah, firmly, hold firmly, hold firmly to the face we profess. You, whenever you feel weak, then you what? You hold on to the faith, what Jesus did already for you. Okay, then <clears throat> for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. Jesus, he also had what? Our body, the sinful body. So he knows what we are going through. See? And, uh, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are now. Okay. Yet, was he, he was without sin. So, now, the conclusion. Let us then approach to the throne of grace. The great uh, throne of God is what? Wide open to us. The throne of grace is wide open to the David 
even though he sinned, that horrible sin. But God still says, David, come to me with your faith. Okay. With the confidence, right? Uh, confidence. Let us approach to the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive the mercy and the find grace to help us in our time of need. Any time, Paul. Any time. Any time. And that's why Jesus says this. Now, for you who are saved, the sin is not sin. What? The, 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 you commit sin after salvation? You know what? I got rid of that too. I took the sin too myself, Jesus says. So, don't call sin, sin anymore for you. As long as what? You believe and, and you, you, you're receiving the grace of God. So, when Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of the guilt in regard to sin and the righteousness and judgment. Okay. So, in world of sin, guilt, they call sin, sin. Okay. You sin, they say, you sinned. Therefore, you need to be punished because you, what? You transgressed. You, you, you didn't keep what? Moses' law. So you need to be punished. That's no, it doesn't go that way anymore. So sin is no longer sin for you if you believe me in Jesus Christ. Uh, then what is sin? You don't believe me is sin. <laughs> right? So in regard to sin, because men do not believe in me. Because everybody's sin, Jesus took it away. But if you don't believe in Jesus who did it for you, then that's the sin which can kill you. Because you don't believe. I took all your sin away, and I died for you. But if you don't have a face, if you don't believe that, you know, what can I do? You're going to die because of the sin that you don't believe me. Okay, understood? Yeah. Now, Road, the road to the perfectionism. And uh, let me show you these writings. Mm. Look at this title. Christ's righteousness makes obedience possible. Boy. If you receive the righteousness of Christ by faith, then you know what this person says. Now you can obey the law. Wow. That means what? You become Christ now, you receive the Holy Spirit, you need to be perfect. That's the road to the perfections. Wow. You know. So, this is statement. Uh, this person wrote this statement. It was impossible for the sinner to keep the law of God. Okay. Which was holy, the law which was holy, just, and good. But this impossibility of the sinner was removed by the impartation of righteousness of Christ to the repenting. So when you accept the God, Jesus, salvation, then that impossibility of keeping the Moses law is what? Gone, removed. Now you can what? You can obey the Moses law. 
wow. You know, if so, this person definitely didn't understand what Roman chapter seven, and in the case of what David's sin, right? There's a teaching like this, and uh, look at this. We believe that we must keep the law, otherwise, or we will not be saved in the kingdom of heaven. So you became a Christian now? Okay, now you can uh, obey the Moses' law. So obey it. If you don't obey it, uh -uh, you can't go to heaven. Wow. This is the, this is the most serious misunderstanding. And lots of people suffering from it. Yeah. And this person even say, repent that your sins may be blotted out. And then the sinner goes to Jesus. You first repent, and then your sin will go away. Then you go to Jesus. Okay? Then, then sinner goes to Jesus, and as the sinner, promises that he will obey the requirement of law. I will, from now on, I will obey the law of Moses. Mm. As the sinner promises that he will obey the requirement of law, he holds out their guilty stains and uh, sets them free and give them power with God. Wow. So you must obey. Okay? So this is a serious misunderstanding. Uh, I wish nobody really believed that. Then where is then? If you are saved, accept the Holy Spirit, accept uh, Jesus, and uh, and then from that point on, what? Somebody's watching you all the time, whether you sin or not anymore. Then finally, you know, God will make a final decision whether you will be saved or not. But no, God's grace, the blood of Jesus. Is saved all sin, and then now just because Jesus, with His blood from the cross, forgave all sin. Therefore, we're gonna be like what? Okay, great. Okay, now we can live, you know, uh, the way we want to live anyway. We we are saved anyway. That if you do that, you haven't received what? Holy Spirit. <laughs> no, nobody who really received the Holy Spirit will respond that way. As if they didn't receive the Holy Spirit. Right? So, God bless us that uh, uh, we. We hang on the what? The assurance of salvation by faith. Thank you.